In this presentation, we will set up service items within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page of our Get Great Guitars company. We have the open windows open, that being open by going to the View tab drop down up top and selecting Open Windows. This is going to be useful at this time because we're going to navigate through some of these open windows. What we're going to do now is set up the items for service items. What does that mean? Let's think about first what we're trying to do, what goal we're trying to accomplish, then we'll set up those items. This is often one of the most confusing components setting up service items and inventory items for uh, people that are working with QuickBooks. If you start into QuickBooks with a company that already has a system set up, they will typically already have the uh, inventory items and the service items set up. Uh, if we are starting a company from scratch, we will want to set those up. And it's useful to do that no matter which way we are working because it gives us an idea of how the system is working, how QuickBooks is driven. So for example, if we're on this homepage and we wanted to create an invoice, we select this invoice item within the customers. Uh, within the invoice, we're going to have to fill out what we're invoicing for. So we got the customer or job, the date, the invoice number, and then this item down here, the quantity and the item, is what we're really looking at at this time. Now we could just, just fill out uh, a quantity and a description and say this is what we did. We worked on a guitar and we want uh, this much in terms of the rate. This is how many hours we could fill that out uh, directly here in the description. However, it's easier if we have the items set up and we can standardize things we can have standardized rates and we then could have some other people uh, use this information and fill out invoices without having to to know exactly what the price is for everything they just need to know the service that happened so when you think more of like a, a check register filling something out in a check register or or automatically populating something then we're hoping to have the items already be here be able to just select those items, have the price be uh, set so that we can just have the quantity and then enter this information in that format. That's what we're looking at here. There's two types of items that could be here. One's a service item that we did work for that has a standard type of rate. And the other would be an uh, inventory item uh, that we would have that would be in this drop down. We're going to start off with the service items, setting those up. It's a little bit easier to do because the service items are not going to be dealing with inventory uh, and therefore they're not going to have like a cost of goods sold related to it. So I'm going to close this back out. Remember not the not this one up here but this one down here. Just close this X out. And so now the invoice is gone in our open windows and we are going to go to the lists. Now this is going to be a type of list within QuickBooks. Within QuickBooks the term list is going to be very important because these types of things are what QuickBooks considers lists. And they're going to be very important. We looked at the chart of accounts. Now we're looking at our other major list, which is going to be the items list. So we're going to go into the items list. And so far we have some of the defaults that have been set up. The sales tax is what we set up when we went through the preferences. So when we have sales tax applicable to a sale, that will be set up. Now we're going to set up all of the items that we're in essence going to charge for. Service items and inventory items. In this case, this time, service items. Now it's a little bit funny because because we have the drop downs up here, QuickBooks I think didn't want more drop downs up top. So now that we're in this window, they have kind of like drop ups. So these are these are drop ups down here. So we we want to go down here to the bottom where we have these items down here and there's an item there's a section that says item. And I'm going to select the little arrow in, into that section and then we could add an item. Now we could go here and add just one new item. Um However, at this time, we're going to add multiple items. If we were to just add a new item, we could go here and select a service item and enter each item one at a time, which is pretty fast. It's fast enough. But in our case, we're going to be entering multiple items at one time, and there is a function for us to do so, for us to go through multiple items and enter them at one time. So I'm going to close this back out and we're going to see if we can use that feature. So we're going to go back down to items here, select that drop up, and we're going to say not new, but we're going to add and edit multiple items. Add and edit multiple items. And then we'll see a screen such as this. 
and it'll give us these section headers. It looks a little bit intimidating because it's a spreadsheet here, but now we can add multiple items at the same time. First thing we want to do is make sure we're on the correct item. So we want this drop down up top and we want to make sure that we are on the service item. So these are items that we're going to charge for, work we're going to do, and charge for on our invoice and sales receipts. So once we do that, then we have the headings here that we can just enter data within uh, the, the section headings. So we can go through here and enter data into those section headings. But we may want to customize these, customize these section headings. These may not be the section headings that, uh, that we want to enter the data in most easily. So what we want to do is, is make sure that these headings up top are in there in such a way that they make it as easy as possible for us to enter this data. To do that, we're going to go to the Customize uh, Columns here, Customize Columns up top, Customize Columns. And here we get the Available Columns. This is what we could use, and this is what is, is used. Now, this is a little confusing because when we see it in this format, it's, it's horizontally displayed. And when we see it in this format, it's vertically displayed. But clearly, we got the items here, the items here, uh, the sub, sub item is the sub item the sales price, sales price, and so on. So we're looking at this side. This is the side we want. We can add or remove items using these little toggle fields. So if we want to take something from over here and put it over there, we're going to use the toggle, and then we're going to use the up and down features to show where we want it within the list. Uh, so that's what we're going to have. So we're going to start with the item name. We want that. The next one we want is going to be a sales description. We'd like to see the sales description. So that's this one, it's not added yet in the default. So I'm gonna select this item. We're gonna go and add the sales description. That'll put it on the bottom. I wanna put it right underneath the title. I wanna be on like the second here in our data input. Therefore, we're gonna move up, move up, move up, move up. And so there we have it. So we're gonna position this so we have the item name and then the sales description. Then we want uh, a purchase description. So these are going to be some of the things that will be listed when we when we create our, our forms, like our invoice and sales receipts. So we would like the purchase description here as well. So when we make it, when we purchase this information on our purchase orders and whatnot. So we're going to add that item. We want to see a purchase description. Goes to the bottom again. We want to put it right next to the sales description because it's probably going to be very similar. So we're going to move it up, move it up, move it up, move it up to right under the sales description. Then we want the sales price. It's down here. I want to move it up. I just want to move it up above the sub item. Uh, so I'm just going to move that up. And then we want the income account. Again, I'm just going to move that up one time. And then we want the sales tax. I'm going to just uh, move that up. And, and really, I just could have just removed this because I don't want that. We don't want that at all. So I'm going to take this one and remove it. So we're going to select that item and go to the remove. Okay, so then when we select enter, uh, it should then change these from vertically to what will just be displayed horizontally so we can enter this data as easily as possible. So we're gonna say okay, and now we've got the item name, and notice we can adjust these, the description, by putting your cursor right in the middle until it looks like that, not like that, but like that. And then we can, we can expand or, or minimize these. Now we want to make the sales description probably needs a bit more room as does uh, the purchase description. The price probably doesn't need that much room. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. The uh, income account <clears throat> probably doesn't need that much room. The tax probably doesn't. So these two items are the ones that we probably want to make a bit larger there. So that's what we have. Now we're just going to enter what we're going to do for service items. We're going to enter, this is going to be kind of generic service items in our in our example problem here, we're going to do two things. We're going to uh, sell guitars, purchase and then sell guitars, marking them up as a merchandising company and do some services on the guitar and charge some type of hourly rate on the guitar. And later we will uh, we'll, uh, consider renting out some of our equipment as well. So I'm going to start just entering this information here. And these are just going to be some generic like service type uh, names here. So I'm not sure they'll actually apply to the guitar, but we're going to say uh, diagnostic and I'm going to keep the same sales description here. So we could just, and notice when I go from here to here, I'm using tab to do that. I'm saying when I'm done tab and it's good practice to, to, you know, 
use those keystrokes because that'll make things a little bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, right click and copy, or right click and copy or use the keystroke and put that here. I'm going to have the same sales description as the name. I'm going to paste that here. I, I paste it with control uh, V and then I'm going to do that same here. I'm going to right click and paste here or control V there. Then we're going to have the uh, sales price, which I'm going to say is 68. The income account we can find with this drop down window. These are going to be the, the list of accounts here. So it's in order. Uh, it's, it's going to the income accounts, but it's an order of the assets, liabilities, equity, and then income and expenses. So this isn't uh, the merchandise income. This is going to be service income. So notice you can also start typing it in there. It's going to be service income. And we don't have a service because we set it up as a merchandising account. So like we buy and sell. So we're also going to do some service items. So this is our first account we're going to have to add to the chart of accounts. Luckily, we don't have to go to the chart of accounts and add it. We're just going to put it here. And once again, note that if we do this, we only have merchandise sales and sales discount. We don't have any revenue account for service revenue, like our, our diagnostic, whatever diagnostic on a guitar is going to be. Uh, so we'll have, so we're going to say that we're going to have to add that. So I'm going to say we need a service and I'm just going to type that in there. Now we could have just said new and typed it in there, but I'm just going to type it in and then I select tab. I'm going to say tab. It's going to say, do you want to set that up? I don't recognize that. And we're going to say, yes, please. We'd like to set that up. And then it's going to default as income at the account type, which is correct because we are in the income account. So we're going to keep that. Service is going to be the name. It's not a sub account of anything. And we don't need any further description. This is just going to be our account name for our revenue account or income account for services. So we're going to say, OK, save and close. Now the sales tax, uh, we're going to say, is there going to be sales tax on the service item? We're going to say no, it's, a, it's not a taxable event. There is no sales tax on uh, the service items. So then we're going to keep going through. I'm just going to make a few more generic service item names. So uh, our service. So we're going to say some kind of hourly service. And we're going to call this the uh, guitar full service. And again, I'm just kind of making up some names of what will be the service items. We're going to have the full service on the guitar here. Once again, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that here. So I'll control V and copy the same uh, sales description and purchase description. The amount is going to be for 140. That's how much we're going to charge for, uh, for the service. And once again, it's going to go to service. Now note, if you wanted to break it out in different accounts by different types of items that we use, meaning different income accounts tracking it, you could do so, but it's not really necessary. You probably want it in one service item account because you could then run reports if we want by item, meaning we could run revenue reports by item over here. So we don't really need to track the different types of revenue in, uh, say, different income statement accounts, different revenue accounts, like calling this diagnostic in this uh, hour service. Let's change the typing name to our service. So you don't normally need to do that, but if you wanted to do that, you, you could. So I'm going to change this once again to non-tax. It's a non-taxable item. And then we're going to say uh, the next one. I'm going to fill the next one out here. We're going to call this partial service. And we're going to say it's still going to be guitar service in the description. Uh, so that's going to be on that's going to be on the invoice when we make it. And uh, and it'll be guitar service on the description on the purchase order, uh, the purchase description. And then we're going to say it's 100 an hour basically and again it's going to be service item so we should just be able to type that in there notice I'm just typing it in there and it's auto filling it down rather than finding it in this drop down window and then I'm selecting tab just going through this by selecting tab and once again it's going to be non taxable because it is a service item and then I'm going to say one more it's going to be tune up and we're going to say this is a five guitar tune up not sure exactly what that is but we'll keep that there so I'm going to copy that and we're going to put that here and so that's going to be same for the sales description and purchase description and we're going to say 200 on that and it's going to be a service and non-taxable 
So this is going to be some of the, the first kind of large amount of data input we're going to have. And that only happens when we first set up the company to set up all these different types of service items if we needed to. If we're selling a bunch of different types of lists of things, we're going to have to go in there and set up the different types of services that we have in some format. And the better we are, it's just basically the data input, meaning uh, uh, typing the information and tabbing through the system, the faster and easier this process is. Okay, so I've changed the spelling a little bit on the tune-up here. So I, again, these are just going to be generic type of names in terms of service items so we can charge both merchandising items and service items and see how they will be affected, especially with regard to uh, the tax on them. So I'm going to go ahead and save these changes. Now, when recording these service items, I had an error message, the error message being that uh, you must specify an expense account to be associated with this item. And the reason that QuickBooks gave us that uh, error message is because of this purchase description. The purchase description would indicate that we're making a purchase of these items as if they're inventory items, even though we specified them as uh, service items. So in other words, we're going to use this purchase uh, description when we go to the inventory items, uh, but we won't need the purchase description if we're not buying inventory. So QuickBooks is basically saying, uh, why do you have this field even though it's a service item? Uh, we, we think that if you have a purchase description item, then, then uh, you should have uh, an expense account for those purchases. And so what I'm going to do here is just delete the purchase description and uh, just have these items here. We don't need the purchase description. And then once we say save changes, we can then say uh, OK. And we should be then OK. So we're going to then save the changes and we will have these items in the list what we want to do then is go back to our items list which should be open over here in the opens window so we're going to go to items list or you can find it in the lists drop down and items list so within the items list now we should have these items so these are now uh, a component of our items we have the diagnostics we've got the uh, service hours we've got the partial service and the tune-up and then we've got the rate over here and now if we were to go say to the home tab, so now I'm going to go to the home tab. And if we were to make either an invoice, we did that last time. Let's, let's just take a look at a uh, sales receipt. We're going to say sales receipt. So if this would be like if we process something for the customer and we got paid at the same point in time, then we're going to go ahead and fill out what, what we did. So we can say the drop down, and here's what we did. If we had a, a tune up of some kind, we're going to say, here's the tune up. Here's the description, uh, uh, the tax, there's no tax, therefore no tax is being uh, uh, selected down here. We're not paying the 5%. And then the quantity, we could say one, and it'll calculate our information for us. Now don't record this. We're not gonna, we're not gonna record this one yet, but that's gonna be uh, the type of information we'll have. So this makes it really easier for us to make the sales receipts and the invoices, makes them all standardized and it's something that once again it's the driving thing that that makes this work that most people don't see and so don't really understand how how the system is kind of put together it's a little bit more complicated even when we get to the merchandising transactions because we'll have to enter the cost of goods sold as well that's what we'll do next time for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info